If you're not ready to leave summer behind, you need this cookie set. It starts by mixing all the colors, and we're just going to be using red, yellow, and blue to mix all these colors, starting with um, just a regular white. We don't need very much of it, but we do need it to be that 20, 10 to 20 second, sorry, 15 to 20 second consistency. Then we're going to move on to a kind of like beigey color, which I've never made using just the primary color. So there was a lot of experimentation. I probably, I'm going to tell you where I would have stopped adding color because I would have stopped a little shorter than, than where I did. But I'm using a toothpick with the yellow and the red to just add a little bit at a time because you can't take the color away. And initially I was very happy with this, but it's still pretty white. So I wanted to add some more yellow for sure. And then also bring in some of that red. But again, I'm just pulling off what was on the toothpick. And I will say I got a few more toothpicks during this process. And I'm being very careful with the red because it can take over very easily, whereas the yellow just isn't as saturated. So this is going to be the longest mixing color for <laughs> for this set because I've never made a beige. And it's since it's not as rich of a color and I'm using these primary colors to get to this color, it's a little harder. Now, if you just want to go buy a kind of beige food coloring, go ahead. I'm just trying to make things easy by having three colors on hand. This is a little bit darker and it's probably where I would have stopped. Maybe adding like a little teeny tiny smidge of red, but instead I'm like, you know what? Let's add some more yellow. Let's do it. Let's, let's make this color richer. And it you can tell my lighting is really difficult here because it keeps getting blown out um, until I pick it up. And I added too much red. I recognize that after the fact. But here we are. That's the color I did not end up with. I decided to keep going. There's so many points in this process where I probably would have stopped, but I just didn't know how it was going to develop. And I, I want to be careful here. I am not unhappy with the color I ended up with, but I think there was a couple points in this process where I could have stopped and I still would have been happy with the color I ended up with. So we're going for that beige. We got it. Now we're going to make three different shades of purple and we're going to use the kind of similar ratio for each shade. So they're the same purple color family. And that is one drop of blue, one drop of red. And then I'm adding some water to get to that 15, 20 second consistency. That means when I run a knife through it, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds to even out. And I want it to be flowing off of my spatula kind of like an Elmer's glue consistency. For the next deeper shade of purple, I'm going to go for two drops of red and two drops of blue. You might not have seen it. That was a very fast drop. And again, I'm adding water. I like to do kind of half a teaspoon at a time, depending on how much icing I'm dealing with. You can see that's a much richer purple. And then we're going to struggle with the end. It's always the last deeper color. No, it's not really always the last deeper, but I did one for the first, one of each food coloring for the first, two of each for the second. So I figured why not three of each for the end. And it, it doesn't work out for me. I come back and add more food coloring and I'm going to show you why. So I mix, 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 mix. And then I go and grab the last one that I had and say, don't these look really similar? They're a, they're a little different. I'm also keeping in mind that one of my sets includes nighttime, so I'm going to need a rich purple. And that's a little bit better, a little bit better. Compare again, definitely getting better here, but I want it a little bit darker. And really what I should have done is just waited and let these colors develop a little bit more because they always will. They always, the dark colors will always develop just a little bit more. And then the last one, I cleaned out my bowl and everything because I needed to make a green. I like the one bowl method for mixing everything, 
but it just didn't work when I had to go from like beige to purple uh, and then to make green. So I cleaned it all out and I'm just doing blue and yellow. Pretty simple color theory. And then we're going to go through and mix. And it's not going to be quite dark enough, so I'm going to come in with a little bit more blue and yellow. And I do about four drops of yellow to every drop of blue. Because again, the yellow is just not as saturated. So I'm going to do eight drops of yellow into this. Hard to see, they're overlapping. And just mixing, and this color is going to develop as well. I needed this for a stem. Could I have gone even darker? Yes, but I find getting a dark green with the primary colors is kind of hard to do. Probably includes more blue, black, I don't know. So we just lay everything out. I didn't show you the paper towel in that layout. And then we're gonna cut the edges. And I recommend very sharp scissors. I actually switched out for the rest of these. I make it completely flat and cut it. And then I turn it 90 degrees, make it completely flat, and cut it again. And you want to start small. You can always cut more. You can't cut less. You just have to rebag. And then I always test. Is, is it coming out like I want it to? Fantastic. Now we're going to move on to decorating the cookies. We're going to start with the mountain cookies. And we want our mountains to go darkest to lightest. So the further away mountains are going to look lighter. And we want them to kind of be in tiers. And so I'm just kind of doing a, a zigzag. If, again, if I were to do this over, I would just use an edible marker and draw the shape on the cookie that I wanted to follow first, primarily so my sun looks better. So we started with the darkest purple. We're just outlining at this point. And then we go for the, the medium purple. And my icing, this is going to be a trend for the entire video, was just a little too runny. I had made it, put it in the fridge for a day or two, and then came back to it. Next, I'm going over to the light light purple right here to make those mountains on top. Anywho, I'd pulled it out of the fridge and I didn't warm it up in my hands. I didn't mix it up. And that was my biggest mistake because you can totally store your icing as long as it's in a sealed container. I just put it in the bags, put it in the fridge. You can put it in the fridge for a few days and it'll be completely usable, but you do want to mix it up. And since I didn't do that, my icing consistency was <laughs> very runny and I was very upset with it. Um, so this is the primary part where I would have wanted to draw this out because my sons got progressively worse as my cookie decorating went on instead of better. And if I just drew on the cookie what I wanted to do, because everything is so delineated, it wouldn't have been a problem. And here I'm coming in with the beige to just kind of do the outline on the top. This is our sunsetty, our dusky looking cookie sky. Um, and we're just adding the outlines so that when we come in and fill in, one, it's going to go a lot faster, but two, our outlines are going to have a little time to dry. And this is another example of my icing consistency just kind of throwing me off. And a trick that I would util I utilize quite a bit in this video and I utilize quite a lot in my cookie decorating is using my scribe to scrape the side of the cookie or scrape anything that might be overflowing before it starts really being a problem. Then you're going to come in and again, starting from darkest to lightest, adding in filling in all of those sections. And because my icing is being so liquidy, I don't want to get right up and kind of overflow my lines. So I'm definitely coming in with my scribe and I'm evening everything out. And everything for this cookie is going to be in real time. In the next two cookies, there are some sped up moments just to get the video running along. Um, but there are also slow moments to show you what, what is actually happening. So evening out with the scribe, and then we're going to come back with the medium purple and fill in these sections. And it's easiest to keep that solid line between sections if you have a solid flow of icing coming out of your piping bag. So what do I mean by solid flow of icing? I mean, it is not, you're not forcing so much icing out of your piping bag that it is curling or kind of like making ribbons, but it's one solid flow. It's one easy flow. Think about if you turn a sink on too high sometimes and the water just kind of sprays everywhere. 
that's that's what happens when you are trying to force the icing out of your piping bag a little too hard and it's going to make your lines really wiggly and not fantastic and I actually I do that with this light purple at some point can't remember when maybe we'll see it in this part of the video maybe we'll see it in a later part you can see it right here actually I am I'm trying to go quickly and it's just not working and this is a great example of why piping faster or piping harder is not going to give you the results that you're looking for and why decorating cookies is a constant test of my patience. Um, when I decorated cookies with my friend originally, it was always funny because I decorated cookies really fast and she would decorate cookies slowly and our cookies turned out roughly the same just because I am remarkably impatient and she is not. Um, and so here I am filling in the sun. So while I said everything is darkest to lightest, I lied because the sun is white. Uh, I am also very unhappy with how this sun shape is coming out. So I'm using my scribe to not only spread out that white, but also to kind of help give my, cook my son some shape. And I'm still unhappy with it. So I come back and add just a little bit more white on the outside, kind of rounding out that sun. Circles are hard, man. They are a hard shape. Last up, after I kind of even that out, is to come in with that beige. Again, you can go lighter with your beige. You can get an actual beige gel food coloring if you want um, and get the exact color you're looking for. This color I'm not upset about, but I was aiming for something just a little bit lighter. And so if I had stopped one or two color add-ins before I got to this color, it would have been exactly what I was looking for. Now, when I decided on the mountain shape, um, as you can tell, I did not draw it out. I just made mountain shapes from the heart. And I probably will draw it out next time, just as an FYI. Don't trust your heart. It's not, it's not the wisest in deciding where mountains should go and what they look like. Am I upset with this cookie? No, I am not. We got there. I still love the shape of this and, and the idea of it. It could look a little better. So there we go. Next up, we have the Starry Night cookie. And we are going to not outline the whole cookie in that dark purple, but about two thirds. And we're going to do a wavy line in between it. And I'm just continuing to add a pretty solid edge onto my cookie with that dark purple. And again, I'm coming in with my scribe. My cookie base was also kind of spread out. I don't know what happened with these cookies. I usually have a pretty solid line. I don't have a flared out bottom like I did for these. For some reason, these flared out. And so I was having some issue seeing where I needed to pipe to and whatnot. After I put in that outline, I then came in and filled in that section with the dark purple royal icing. And I kind of, I, I don't go all the way to the edge. I'm not looking to super, super fill in this cookie. Again, because my icing was just it was so inconsistent with its consistency. And so I didn't want it to spill over. And secretly one of these cookies did spill over. And I used my scribe to scrape the edge and saved it as best I could while still being irritated at an inanimate object. So right now I'm using my scribe just to kind of even everything out as much as possible. I like doing these kind of little loop-de-loos with my scribe so that I'm never forcing one thing one way. I don't know. It works for me. Not everyone does it that way. That's fine. Now you're going to come in with your medium purple and you're just going to finish the outline of the circle. And then I like to go again. I'm going slow and steady around that curved edge we made with that dark purple. And then I'm just going to fill in that section. And this is our night sky. You could think of it as a twilight time. 
and that little edge just wasn't as defined as I wanted it to be so I came back and again I'm using my scribe to just kind of push my icing where I want it to be, fill in sections. Oftentimes I like to do what I call the washing machine method where I stick my scribe in the middle and I twirl, twirl, twirl to even out all of my icing. I would not want to do that with this cookie or the sunset cookie the mountain sunset cookie because then my colors and my lines could get messed up, but I will do it on the next cookie. So I'm coming in with white and I'm just doing very as small as I can with the piping bag dots. They're not precise at all. They're not going to any specific way. And then I'm just gonna do one big one. It's just, it's, it's a little teeny bit bigger. And I'm gonna come in with my scribe and from the center, I'm just gonna poke in a little bit, not all the way down, and drag out. And I want to do this on four corners of a circle. What does that mean? <laughs> I want to make four points on this. After every single time that I poke and drab, I am wiping off my scribe. And I'm wiping off my scribe because there's gonna be a little bit of purple on it and I don't want that in my white star. And I'm just trying to get those edges kind of exactly where I want. I'm being, I'm being very precise about it. And then I'm going to come in and make a little one. And this is where I sped things up because I'm doing the same thing. It was just a smaller dot, but I'm doing swipe up, swipe down, swipe over, swipe over. And then I'm going to repeat, make a big dot uh, in the dark section, and then a little dot next to it, drag out so that we have two kind of twinkle stars and two little twinkle stars next to it. And then I end up putting some white icing on my paper towel and dipping my scribe into it so I could have little dots. And then I'm just tapping very lightly those little dots onto the cookie. Very, very lightly. And I'll go back and I will refill my scribe by just dipping it into my white icing. And there you have your Starry Night cookie. This brings us to our final cookie of the set. And this is our Blackberry or Marionberry cookie. We're gonna start out with that beige color. You're gonna circle outline the entire cookie and then you're going to fill it in. Now I like to outline it maybe two, maybe three times. And I believe I once again kind of go over the edge a little bit. So I might come in with my scribe and correct that before I fill in. And then I'm just going to fill in. You can see I'm not going all the way to the edge. And again, that's because I feel like my icing is having a risk of overflowing. So I don't want to tempt it by putting a heavy amount of that filled intersection right up to that line. I am just gonna come back, maybe add a little bit of icing at the end before I come in with my scribe and just push my icing a little bit to the side. So again, I'm just adding a, a little line around the outside so it's not as spread out. You can see this is a great example of pressuring the icing out of my piping bag a little too fast where it's like a, a wriggly line. And then I'm gonna come in with my scribe push some of that icing to the side just until I, it's touching that outside line. I am not forcing a lot of icing to the side, just a little bit. And that's another reason why I like to do these little circles because it's pushing and pulling the icing back into the center at the same time. But you might notice that there are some indentations in my icing because I'm moving that icing around. And this is why I like to do the little washing machine method where I stick my scribe in the middle and twirl, 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 and then everything settles out very nicely. So I am getting a little spillage, so I came back with my scribe. Now we're gonna take that dark purple and we are gonna pipe on little blackberries or Marion berries. Marion berries are a big hit here in the Pacific Northwest and they're just a form of blackberry, but they're really tasty. And so I am doing that black or that dark purple and I am doing a row of three, a row of four, a row of three, and then a row of two. And I'm just gonna put them kind of sporadically on the cookie. Not a whole lot of rhyme or reason to this. This is probably another area where like, I could better plan out a pattern, um, and I don't. You don't super have to worry about if the dots touch or not, and I'm just gonna speed it up here a little bit. 
and add the rest of those dots, your dots can touch. It's okay. And then we're going to come in with the the medium purple and just add a smaller dot on top. And this will give our berries a little bit more dimension so they don't just look, they almost look like little beehive or honeycomb on the cookie right now. And we want, we want a little bit more dimension. I also decided I want one more blackberry at the bottom. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to add in that medium purple, just a light dot, not on the center of those dots, but a little bit to the side, wanting to keep kind of the same angle on all of them, just for consistency sake, speeding up and going through there, adding all the dots. And then we're gonna end by grabbing that green. This is the only cookie that uses green and I kind of hate to do cookie sets like this because why, why am I making why am I making one color for one cookie? But that's kind of how the white is for these cookies as well. We're not, we're not going to make a big deal of it, okay? So we're doing three lines on top of each of these blackberry, blackberries. And they are all either curving in to make the stem or going straight up to make the stem. They don't have to be very precise. It's berries. And there is our Marionberry cookie. Try out this set and let me know what you think.